सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी आर डूइंग इवेंट वी थ्री एंड वी आर कमिंग टू ऑलमोस्ट द कंक्लूजन ऑफ मॉड्यूल फोर वेर वी वर ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड नेचर एंड एग्जिस्टेंस इन दिस लास्ट लेक्चर ऑफ मॉड्यूल फोर लेक्चर ट्वेंटी वी स्टार्टेड टू लुक एट द रोल ऑफ द ह्यूमन बींग in this coexistence so we said that this coexistence is ever expressive it is unfolding it is expressing itself and we see it in the whole nature so we see it in all the orders in nature how it is unfolding how it is constantly expressing itself so with that we can get an idea of what the role of the human being is so like we said we drew some conclusions so far these conclusions were about the human being and about the existence so one that the human being is a coexistence of self and body then of these the self is the one that is central to our existence the body we use like an instrument and if we look at the self our needs are for continuous happiness which can be fulfilled by right understanding right feeling and right thought in the self these were the conclusions we had drawn about the human being when we had looked at the existence we had said that the existence is in the form of coexistence which is in the form of units which are submerged in space this coexistence is ever present it is there in each and every you know it has been there from before it is there it will be there it is ever effective there is no part which is devoid of this coexistence everywhere that you see this between all the units this coexistence is there and it is ever expressive we see it unfolding in the form of what we have described as the four orders so we see it unfolding from uh, you know a simpler to a more complex and complex and complex expression so all of this we are able to see this or at least we are able to and uh, at least at the thought level we can appreciate this and really to understand it properly to be able to see it directly we need to awaken to the activities of the self so once we awaken to the higher activities within the self then we can on the basis of these higher activities on the basis of seeing the expression of the coexistence and the coexistence itself then we can bring all our lower activities in line with it so with that we were trying to see what exactly is the role of the human being in this existence and we said that the role of the human being in this existence is firstly to understand the coexistence and secondly to live in coexistence so when we say to understand the coexistence it is what we are referring to as right understanding to be able to awaken to all these higher activities awaken to contemplation see the relationship awaken to understanding see the innateness the self organization the harmony and then awaken to realization and see the whole basis for this the submergence of the units in space so just by doing this we can get the knowledge of the coexistence we can understand the coexistence now when it comes to living in coexistence then we have to set all our lower activities in line with this design of coexistence and when we do that then we can live in coexistence so basically if you see when we talk of understanding the coexistence we have to understand all these parts in the expression of coexistence we have to see the relatedness we have to see the harmony we have to see the coexistence and the provision is there the potential is there the provision is there in the form of the natural acceptance now we have to make the effort and awaken to these activities 
and when we do this and we live in coexistence we find that we are fulfilled and we are able to accomplish what our basic human desire was for continuous happiness within ourselves so when we are talking of understanding the coexistence this is what we are referring to as knowledge and when we are ensuring the feeling and thought of coexistence or living in coexistence that is being termed resolution because it is one holistic solution to the vast majority of the problems that we face today so with this single um, work on ourselves we can get to the solution to all these problems in a holistic manner which is what we are referring to as resolution now there are two parts to this you can go to the next slide one is when we are living in coexistence with other human beings that means we are able to see our relationship with other human beings and we are growing this circle we see beyond the people just within my immediate family where we are connected by the body beyond this to perhaps the neighbors the relatives the friends the community then the city then the state and so on until we can see our relationship with all human beings in the world so this is what we mean by going from our small family to the world family and ultimately being able to have this undivided society so whenever this happens what our focus can be is am i living in this manner because i want to be fulfilled i want to be happy so am i seeing my relationship with all human beings in the entire world and am i working towards it am i participating playing my part in this the other part of living in coexistence is where we are seeing our relationship with entire nature not just with human beings but with all orders in the nature so going up to what we call the world family order or a universal human order where we look at our relationship not only with human beings but with all other units and therefore we participate we work with nature and while we are getting fulfilled we are also ensuring the fulfillment in nature because we see our relatedness and our all our lower activities are now in line with the higher activities the natural acceptance and so we live in coexistence we maintain the harmony that is there in nature we don't disrupt it rather we help to aid it and we work towards a universal human order so this is what the role of the human being in this existence is next slide so ultimately to gain the knowledge right means to be able to directly see the existence the way it is to have the resolution meaning to bring all my lower activities in line with this so that i can live in coexistence with other human beings working towards an undivided society and with all of nature working towards the universal human order so this is what we need to do this is the task one is to ensure the knowledge and the resolution within myself on the one hand and on the other hand working outside with the help of the body to work for an undivided society and a universal human order where i can see my relationship with each and every unit in this existence so this is what we were discussing yesterday and we had also given a small not a small assignment but uh, something that will need reflection reflect on the effort you are making for knowledge or understanding on a daily basis how much time and effort are you devoting to this and also reflect on the feeling and thought of coexistence and what effort you are making to ensure this within yourself we can also see what we are doing as our participation now when we talk of undivided society and universal human order it seems like very big words but you can start small we do start small because from where we see whatever we can see there we start working so we start within ourselves 
then we start working within the family, then we start working within the immediate nature around us. And slowly we move further out and further out and further out. We can expand our vision to see that we don't need to stop there. Anywhere where we stop or we put a boundary, then we are limiting ourselves. Then we are not reaching our full potential for which we have the capability, we have the possibility. Um, something to share? Or there were questions also yesterday. I think if we can bring forward the questions, we can discuss those also. Yes, Baliji Reddiji. Namaskar, madam. Namaskar to all. As a part of uh, the... Madam, am I, uh, are you able to hear my voice? Yes, yes. Namaskar. Madam, thank you. Thank you. So you have given the assignment reflect on the effort you are making uh, for knowledge on a daily basis. How much time and effort uh, are you devoting to this? Uh, uh, very, very less time I am uh, uh, giving the time. And uh, the reflection on the feeling and thought. Uh, yes, I can feel uh, the, the uh, innateness. I can see the... Uh, living beings and they not only their existence uh, and also the growth uh, and uh, the expression as uh, uh, the four orders the same energy is expressing uh, the four orders what i feel uh, from the beginning i have been uh, telling uh, this is the feeling what i have madam the thought also yeah, and, if you put here, these are two contradictory statements you are making. Yes, madam, please tell. One is you are saying that you are able to see this. Mm, Other is you are able to say, you are saying that you are not spending much time mm -hmm. focusing on this. Mm -hmm. so able to see with gross eyes. These two are contradictory, isn't it? Mm -hmm. After all, when we say four orders, mm -hmm. we tend to focus on the nature. Yeah, yeah. And maybe if we see it is in our thoughts. Yes, the thoughts only with gross eyes only. But I we, am seeing. We tend to forget that human beings are also part of this nature. What mm -hmm. about the human order? Mm -hmm. If we are able to see in coexistence, if we are able to see the coexistence and live in coexistence, mm -hmm. then we will see our participation, our role. Yeah. Yeah, then yeah. we will be in continuous happiness. Yeah, yeah. But we don't see that. Mm -hmm. So, if you see, from mm -hmm. time to time when we think about it, it seems to make sense. I mm -hmm. think this is how we approach it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That at least uh, some extent. Huh. I mean, it is naturally acceptable to us. Mm -hmm. So, the thought seems right. Mm -hmm. When we hear it, when we get the information, it seems right. In our living, when it comes to the nature, there's hmm. not that much to... Um, it's not that much considerable. No, it's not so challenging because hmm. the nature, it's already, you know, in a definiteness. So we don't, whatever we expect is what we see. But the challenge comes when it is dealing with, when we are dealing with human beings. Yeah, yeah, really, madam. Because there... We may have certain expectations from others. We may have some expectations about various things. We have many beliefs that, you know, this is how it should be and this is how things should be. Yes, madam. And then when people do otherwise, we get disturbed. Really? So that means we have not really understood the coexistence, the harmony, the relationship. Yeah, really, madam. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So really. We need to work on it. Yeah, yeah. Unless it's like this. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot understand engineering unless you go through your ABCs. Yeah, yeah. So if I don't understand how to write, if I don't know how to write, how to read even the ABCs, how will I get to understanding what is being taught in the class, in the engineering class? Yeah. Really. For that, I have to start from the basics. Mm -hmm. So if we see, we may have had many wrong assumptions. Just this simple assumption that all the units are separate. Our focus mm -hmm. is on the unit. 
Yeah, yeah. Don't ever think about the space. So just with that, we have many wrong assumptions. Now we are trying to change all that. We are trying to bring our assumptions in line with what the design of nature is. So even though we are not able to see that whole design of nature, we have the natural acceptance within us, isn't it? Yeah, really. That provision is there in all of us. So we need to spend some time, make that effort, look at my feeling, look at my imagination, look at the feeling, see if it is in line. At every moment, this is what we are saying, every moment. Mm -hmm. And so you can see how many, you know, in a whole day. Yes, madam. There may be just a few moments when we think about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really. <laughs> ultimately end of the day we are continuing with so many of the assumptions that we have not checked if they are right for us or not really madam so more detail we need to look into with more um, understanding and the understanding will come if we pay attention but if you're yeah. not paying attention it will not come yeah yeah just by being <laughs> Ah, just by listening, <laughs> just by having the information, we think we know, but we don't know. Because yeah, really. when it comes to living, we go by, slip back into our old sanskars. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Really so ultimately, we have to make effort. So if we see, you know, we started with those, or at least we talked of exercise one and two. Yeah, yeah. Helped a lot, madam. Ah, but we have to continue it every day. Ah, yeah, yeah, continuing. <laughs> continuing it. Yeah, See, continue. we hear the exercise, it's over. <laughs> we maybe take a month and it's over. And then after that, what happens? Yeah, yeah. And we go Actually, back to yeah, the way yeah. we are living. Yeah, then yeah, there's no use. Yeah, madam, really. We are continuing, but uh, that uh, effort is less. Ah, uh, so who has to make the effort that we have yeah, to do? Yeah. We, are, we only, madam. Yeah. So somewhere we are still unsure about whether it is significant for us or not. Yeah. Ultimately, that's what it is, no? Yeah, really, really, madam. It's stopping us from deciding because we can do this while we are doing all other activities. So you don't have to stop any activity. Mm -hmm. We are already getting some inputs, say, in the morning session and all. Yeah, really, madam. At Any least we have, we have got some knowledge regarding that. Ah, but we have to uh, it implement it. Yes, yes, really, yeah. madam. Until we bring it into living, it makes no difference to us, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And we continue to be, you know, shift from happiness to unhappiness time and time again. Some practice, isn't it? Yeah, really, madam. It's like uh, some people say, you know, that um, easy to say than to practice. Ah, of course. <laughs> no, and a lot of people say, you know, that um, when they talk of, you know, having a good birth and um, having a good life later and all of that. So they say when you are at your deathbed, if you are having the right feeling, the right thought, mm -hmm. and you are focusing on, you know, knowledge. Then you will, when you, you come back, you will come, you know, you'll start with that. Mm -hmm. But the point is that if all our life we have not really practiced it, it's not going to happen. Really? At the last moment also. So like people say, you know, in my youth, I want to enjoy. When I become old, then I will look at all this. <laughs> very wrong, very wrong. No, <laughs> it doesn't happen. Yeah, really, it madam. It happen because... By then, I have so many more added sanskars, and the body is failing, and there are so many issues that really? I get entangled in that I don't see any time, I don't make any effort for this. So, while we are, you know, good, we are um, competent, or at least we are able to make that effort, we can do it right now. Really, madam. 
whenever we go to the religious books also many people uh, suggest uh, it's not the time it is uh, when you uh, become old then you have to go through all these things so very no, wrong no, notion says like that that is our interpretation <laughs> ah yeah our interpretation <laughs> yeah. true yes. so thank you madam so we have to make the effort really madam anybody else would like to share something or there were questions i think yesterday we can take those questions now before we move on namaste madam namaste, namaste. to all uh, i have a question that uh, understanding the submergence and coexistence in the all four orders mm -hmm. it, moment we have to keep in mind something while doing other activities also in the daily routine mm -hmm. uh, and briefly it is coexistence and understanding the submergence every moment and exactly briefly how to prepare our mind to set in and so that it it, it is there every moment with us yeah so in tradition also they talk of two words one is abhyas na? Yes. and the other is vairagya so what do those two words mean one is detachment detachment in the sense not that you ignore everything else but you withdraw from trying to say get pleasure out of the sense organs so you withdraw from those sensual pleasures withdraw yourself you see what I'm saying? Yes. From sensual pleasures, that is one part. The other part is abhyas or practice, this making effort, paying attention inside. Now, with whatever time we can spend. Thing is, we get busy with our activities every day. Now, we spend some time in the morning session, but then after that, we get busy with so many activities and we forget about this. So, if it is significant, if it is important for us, we will remember it, isn't it? Yeah. Now, why do we go to the office at a particular time? We make sure we get up, we get ready in time. But on the weekdays, why do we do it? Because it is, we consider it important, isn't it? Yeah. So, similarly, if we consider this important, we will make effort to recall this to you know pay attention to it whatever it may take so if i am forgetting this but i really i want to get there i want to be able to see all this directly then i will make effort to at least remind myself that let me go step by step step by step at least we can see where we want to reach isn't it that yes. part, I think we have some clarity about where we want to go. And we have the natural acceptance. Now, all we have to do is pay attention. Pay attention to the imagination. Check the feeling. And check with the natural acceptance. So, I mean, one can put reminders on the phone. One can put sticky notes wherever you are. One can just sort of um, uh, remind yourself in various different ways throughout the day so that you pay attention. Once you start with these reminders, say every hour if you are reminding yourself, then slowly you will find within a few days itself that you don't need reminders anymore from outside. This is happening within. You are constantly checking within. So it will start happening, you know, um, very, um, in, initially it will seem like a lot of effort. But as you keep doing that, at least the seeing part will become less and less of an effort. It will become like very natural that all the time, on the one hand, you are paying attention outside, but on the other hand, you are also aware of 
you're feeling within and what is going on within. That is the state we want to be in. Once we are there, we don't have to make effort every time. No? We, at least we are able to see that we are, when we are doing this, that confusion, that contradiction in the lower activities becomes less and less and less. We become calmer. As we become calmer and as those questions keep you know, we keep sort of coming back to the questions within us. Then we reflect more and more. And as we do this, then these higher activities start opening up within us. So it will happen slowly, step by step by step. It won't happen suddenly. I mean, when you see it, you when you... You see the coexistence, the, all the units, whatever the masters, people who have reached there, they, they describe. It is all in one go that you see everything. But that, you know, working towards it, that takes time. It's like when you're going up a mountain, that going up is a long process. It takes a lot of effort. Once you reach the top, you look down all at once, you can see everything, isn't it? Yes. So same way, you know, once you reach to the activity of realization, you will be able to see it. There, the seeing part is not an effort. But then again, to bring all the lower activities in line, to bring all your assumptions in line, that also may require some effort. Because like we said, some sanskars are um, sort of already weak. They're not so strong. So there I may get success quickly. I may be able to overcome them very quickly and bring them in line with the natural acceptance. There may be some other sanskars which are not in line that are very deep rooted. There I may have some trouble. So there people say that, you know, when I'm having this feeling, I can see that I don't want to have this feeling, yet I continue. This is your deep-rooted sanskar, which is driving your feeling, even though you can see that you don't want to have this feeling. Even in that very moment, you're not able to come out of it because of the deep-rooted sanskar. But there also, if you see the provision, it's a very beautiful provision in nature. All you have to do is pay attention. Be able to see that. When I see it, that I don't want this, this is not naturally acceptable, yet I'm having this. I don't feel comfortable with it. Next time around, when again I have this, I may notice it earlier. And so you find, many people share this, no? that we were, we, earlier it was that after I shout and scream, then later on, after two hours, I may recall that I shouldn't have done that. Yes. Then it happened sooner and sooner. Within five minutes of shouting, I say, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Then before, you know, while you're shouting, there itself you will realize that this is not what I wanted. How come I did it again? But each time you are doing this, you are paying attention to it. You are noticing it. You are also noticing that this is not naturally acceptable to you. So eventually, as soon as those um, feelings are starting to rise in you, you notice it and you are able to have the right feeling. Because you can see what is your natural acceptance. And then slowly what happens is this feeling again and again and again, the right feeling comes up and this becomes your sanskar. Now that old sanskar has faded away and gone, drops off. So this is how the process is. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I think we can go forward. So if we see the role of the human being in this existence, 
is to understand the coexistence and to live in coexistence. This is what we've been talking about. Now, if we see really when we say to live in coexistence, we are actually talking about the submergence, the coexistence. And on this basis, we are also talking of the harmony of the relationship that are already there by virtue of this coexistence. So we can say instead that the role of human being in this existence is to understand the coexistence, to understand the harmony, to understand the relationship, and to live in coexistence, to live in harmony, to live in relationship. Because ultimately, that is what our task is, that is what we are trying to do, isn't it? And this is what we were working on when we were looking at the exercises. So if you recall exercise one, you can go to the next slide. If you recall exercise one, in, you know, initially what we need to do, we said we have to check our imagination, we have to check our feeling, we have to become aware of the feeling, see if it is naturally acceptable or not, see if you're comfortable or not and see who is deciding the feeling, and all that we talked of, isn't it? And you notice that whenever you have the right feeling in you, you feel comfortable. Whenever you have a feeling that is not naturally acceptable to you, you are uncomfortable with them. And we try to see this even in our interactions no? with other units. So in step 6a, what did we see? We asked ourselves, what is natural for me? We checked what is naturally acceptable to me. We verified that what is natural for me and what leads to my happiness is the feeling of coexistence, the feeling of harmony, the feeling of relationship. That is what my natural acceptance is because that is what the design in nature is in this coexistence and a reflection of that is in me in the form of the natural acceptance. So that provision is there in me and I can see that whenever my feeling is in line with this, I am happy, I am calm, I am comfortable. This we tried to see, you know, we verified this or tried to verify it in step 6a. In step 6b, we were trying to understand, to actually see this coexistence, to understand the harmony, to be able to contemplate on the relationship, to be able to see that relationship with all the units. So all this that we have been talking about in UHV 3 is largely that we have tried to understand the human being, we have tried to understand the nature, existence. And with that, we are trying to see what the role of the human being in this existence is. So for that, the practical application of that was the exercise one, exercise one and two, in fact. So those exercises, although we may have finished it in terms of completion as information, but those exercises have to continue within us. We have to keep working on it. So if we make that effort, if we you know, keep reminders for ourselves, if we work on those exercises, we'll find that we are slowly moving in the right direction. But it is happening. And of course, this is not the only way. This is what we keep saying. So. If you're reading some texts and all that help you to have, you know, as a reminder, you can do that. People do, you know, reading of texts, people do listening to audios, reading biographies of uh, realized people, but all of those things can inspire you, but ultimately you have to directly see it within yourself. That is the only way. But all these other ways can be supportive. 
So in exercise one, step seven, we were trying to ensure that the feeling and thought that we have at that moment or at one moment, it is in line with coexistence, harmony and relationship and not otherwise. And we notice that when we have this kind of a feeling within us, we are in happiness at that moment. So now I can also see that if at that moment I can ensure the feeling, then it is up to me, isn't it? We already said in step four that I am the decision maker, I decide the feeling. Now in step seven, we are saying that I can ensure this feeling within myself, this feeling of coexistence, harmony and relationship. And I can see that I am happy. So if I can ensure it at this moment, what is stop? I can ensure this at every moment and I can be in continuous happiness. So this is what we were trying to do through exercise one and two. Essentially seeing our role in this existence, our role starts with understanding things within ourselves, higher activities, being able to see the reality the way it is, understanding the coexistence. And with that understanding, bringing our feelings and our thoughts in line with this. When we say coexistence, again, we are referring to coexistence, harmony and relationship. So again, if I bring my feeling in line with this and I can bring it in line every moment, then I am in continuous happiness. This is what we set out to do. So it's a long journey. It's not something that will happen overnight. And we need not get restless about it. That why is it not happening? Or you know, when will I be able to see? And all these kind of questions we have. But then as Baliji Reddy Ji just mentioned, we're not paying enough attention to it. So how will it happen? It won't just happen. Like we keep going back to that example no, of Buddha. Somebody was talking to him about, if I pray, will it happen? Then he said, if you have to cross the river, how will you go? You either have to swim across, or if there is a boat, you can sit in the boat and paddle the boat and go across. But you have to make that effort. If you sit on one side of the river and keep saying, I must get to the other side, I must get to the other side and make no effort for it, it will not happen, isn't it? You have to make the effort. So in our case, the provision is there already. All we have to do is pay attention. That is our making effort. But there also we tend to be drawn outside. Somewhere we are considering the outside very important. Therefore, we are not paying attention inside. The moment we start seeing that this, I am important, inside my feeling is important, yeah. I want to be able to see the reality. If that becomes more important to me, then I will slowly start paying more attention inside. And of course, when I pay attention inside, I will find I have more clarity about the outside also. Right now, it may seem like, how can I spend so much time paying attention inside? But very soon, we will find that we are able to pay attention inside and outside. That provision is already there in us. So we don't have to separately take time out. Rather, while we are doing this, we will find we save time because we are so aware Whatever we are doing outside is also more focused. We don't get lost in our imagination because we come back right away. We become more aware. So that possibility is there in all of us. But we have to pay attention. We have to make effort. So with this, you know, next slide. If there are any questions, you can just uh, raise your hand and we'll stop and try to talk about them. Otherwise, I will keep going. So, fulfillment of this role of the human being, 
leads to continuous happiness. This is what we were saying. We can appreciate it when we have the right feeling at any one moment. We are able to see that we feel happy. So now, as we keep doing this, as we keep having more and more moments of the right feeling, we can notice that we have become more calm, we are more at peace. No? This we are expressing in the form of bliss, satisfaction, peace and happiness at the various levels, which we'll see in the next slide. Now what we'll do is we'll just finish this and then we'll take the question. Um, so if we see in this slide, now here a lot of information is there, but if we can see, this is what we've been talking about. No? On the one hand, we are working for realization within, moving upwards, trying to awaken to the higher activities. And on the other hand, down below, in the expression, we are trying to have it in our living. When we interact with other human beings in our behavior, when we work with nature, and when we are participating in the larger order. Even to see our participation and work towards that. This is part of the expression outside. And ultimately, we are working for that undivided human society and the universal human order we were talking about, so that this can continue generation after generation and it becomes a human tradition. Now, in this process, while we are doing this, we also notice that within us, we are becoming happier, which is our. We started with that basic aspiration that we want to be happy. So we have given it different terms, you know, if it is at the level of just the temporary happiness, what we call selecting, tasting level, then we are terming it happiness. If it is at the level of thought, having less conflict in the thoughts, more calm in the thoughts, then we are calling it peace. We are able to see the relatedness, that assurance you get that all are related. Nobody is different from me. That satisfaction you get from it. Understanding when you see everything, the harmony that is there, the definiteness that is there. Again, you know, you experience that feeling of bliss. And I suppose that realization, you can call it super bliss. The words are not important. The experience of this, the actual being able to be there and to experience that feeling, that is significant. But just to be able to uh, sort of talk about it, these words. So with this, can we go to the next slide? I said that on the one hand, we are working for the realization within, trying to move up, awakening to the higher activities. And on the other end, as an expression, a natural expression of this outside, in our living, it shows up when we have, you know, when we awaken to the higher activities, with that we bring our lower activities in line with the higher activities. And then in our behavior with other human beings, in our interaction with other human beings, in our work with nature, in all of our participation in the larger order, this expression of this is there. Expression of what? Expression of my lower activities now being in line with the higher activities. My imagination being guided by this um, these higher activities of realization, understanding, and contemplation with which I am able to see the coexistence, the harmony, the relationship. So with this, you know, not only are we working towards the universal human order and trying to bring this um, 
generation after generation as a in a definite manner so that it becomes a tradition for not just when i am there but for generations to come at the same time within me i experience this happiness within so this happiness when we say um, you know when we are looking at the lowest level when we are talking about sensual pleasures or the temporary happiness that we talk of we term it happiness when at the level of thoughts we don't have contradiction in our thoughts we feel calm this we are calling peace when we are able to see the relatedness with each and every you know other human being and we can every unit in fact and we can have that assurance that every other person is related to me and i have that feeling of relationship in me then i have this feeling of satisfaction when i am able to understand the harmony that is there in all of nature the definite pattern the the self organization of all the units and how things are happening in a very definite manner including my own self organization then i have this feeling of bliss and ultimately with realization seeing the submergence being able to see the space i mean you can call it super bliss is what i was saying but eventually these words are not important what is important is to be able to directly see it and directly experience these feelings so this is what i was saying now we can go to the next slide yeah so with this um once we fulfill this role of the human being in the existence we find that this unfolding of the coexistence that we are seeing that is also completed how we'll see in the next slide so in this this slide you can see that how we talked about this already that in these three orders physical order bio order animal order things are already happening in a very definite manner nothing to be done there we don't have to interfere we don't have to try to correct anything it's already perfect things are happening very smoothly in a very definite manner in a very um uh, you know the conduct for each and every unit in these orders is very definite it is ensured already the work that needs to be done is only in the human order this is where the problem is because we have not reached to the point of seeing this pattern this design we have the choice but we may not be making the right choices because we are working with so many assumptions because we are not paying attention inside because we are not awakening to the higher activities once we awaken to the higher activities and we have the right understanding and with this activity completeness when we bring all our lower activities in line so that we have the right feeling the right thought and it comes in our conduct then it is called conduct completeness there we can have definiteness of the conduct which you can see in the next slide so now you find that this what we were seeing this whole chart in existence that becomes complete this is the task to do this is what we need to do so all the three other orders are already fine we need to get our act together we need to awaken to the higher activities bring our lower activities in line and live accordingly then this whole pattern in existence is complete so this is what we need to do how do we go about doing it next slide we already said this the role is role of the human being is to understand the coexistence and live in co coexistence or we can say understand coexistence harmony and relationship and live in coexistence harmony and relationship 
how do we do it like we already mentioned one of the ways is through exercise 1 and 2 exercise 3 we will come to eventually but we have to first build up our competence for getting through exercises 1 and 2 if we do this when we do this we will find that it is fulfilling for us what we were aspiring for that continuity of happiness that we are able to get to that so this is one way there can be many supportive ways like we said we don't have much time but we'll take uh, whatever questions and then remaining questions we can take yeah good morning didi good morning to all who explores uh, didi it is uh, when i am trying to evaluate myself and evaluate the other human being i try to uh, use competence i or i bring in competence with it to uh, understanding part so in that competence is with respect to the understanding only or it is with respect to the uh, with the capability of doing the work also the skills yeah so skill is one small part of the competence but largely when we are talking of competence here our focus is on you know our how much of our imagination or how much of what we are thinking feeling is in line with the natural acceptance so it is most of the time understanding only with the right understanding yeah i mean ultimately it becomes right understanding but till we get to the right understanding you have the natural acceptance to work with isn't it we have not reached completeness of right understanding isn't it yeah. yes yeah. so right now because we have not reached there we can't say that we have right understanding yes, but we do have the natural acceptance that we are able to see all of us have it so as we bring our feelings and thoughts more and more in line with the natural acceptance we start awakening to these higher activities when we awaken to the activity of realization from there we can say yes i have completeness of right understanding and with that when i bring my all my lower activities in line and i live accordingly then i can say that my conduct is also complete now does that make sense yeah yeah thank you <laughs> thank you so any other questions or observations we'll take tomorrow meanwhile um, for the assignment part i will put it in the group we will just try to go through the couple of steps step 6a 6b and 7 of exercise 1 in the assignment uh, for now we'll close because it's time for the hindi session